What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and this is the truth behind the Foxy Brown and Queen Latifah beef. My goodness, let's take it back. <laughs> Go all the way back to 1995. Um, 1995 was the emergence of Junior Mafia and Little Kim coming out. Foxy Brown was doing features, and they weren't really the sexy women that we knew them as at that time. Fox was not all dressed in the outfits that you see her in when her album was out. When they were doing this, they were rugged. Look, Kim was wearing some stuff like a mink and some stuff like that, but she wasn't really looked at as she was the tough chick. On um, Players Anthem and all that. She was the rugged Brooklyn girl. It was when her solo album was getting ready to come out. And they wanted to promote Kim. And they were making the videos. They wanted to make her sexy. Like the dudes loved her. But they loved her because she was a rugged, rugged Brooklyn girl. And that's how... Fox was. She was a teenager. She's a 17-year-old girl. But she had a full developed body and was dating older men, but she was a kid, basically. So she dressed like a rugged chick, had her hair all pulled back. You know, that's what she did. It was the next year after 95, 96, everybody I told we all did the whole breakdown of the of the the war or the bidding war for Foxy. Kim was already wrapped up in her deal. They decided what they wanted Kim to look like on Little Kim's album. That's not a bad boy album. That's an Undia's album. And Biggie and Un, you know, they came up with the idea of what her image should look like. They wanted guys to want to sleep with her. They had the poster inside the, the CD. And people started to scoff at it. But people like... Hmm, who was this? But people such as... Hmm. I could, man, that's crazy. But anyhow, the people that were rapping, you saw people like uh, MC Light. She started to change up. She went from rough neck. I need a rough neck. I need somebody who put fingers in his food. She went from all that to the keep on, keep keeping on, hey, doing it right. You know, she was working with Puffy. So she was doing more R&B-ish type rap. And going down that sexy route, you know. So this was never how she was perceived coming up. She was just... The cute girl who really didn't even wear makeup, really. Now, you look at the situation with all the other female rappers. They were basically looked at because they were trying to be respected by the dudes. So they tried to dress almost like the dudes. And like, yo, we really do this. We ain't one of these women, you know, coming in here and trying to be all super sexy and they going to flop, you know, because they felt like if they dressed like that, nobody would take them seriously. So now, here's two women come out, Foxy Brown and Little Kim, and they rapping and they being taken seriously. And they selling a lot of records. They were only the second and third female rappers ever to go platinum. The brat was first. And the brat wasn't dressed like them. She was dressed like the dudes. They were the first ones dressed like them and selling millions of records. And now this is changing the game because now the other female rappers are like, hey, we're going to have to start dressing like that. And I don't want to dress like that. 
I don't want to be walking around in heels <laughs> on stage. So, so they, they lashed out about it. And man, oh man. Then, you know, under their breaths, they would talk slick. Now, they would have these industry parties. Like Fox was always with our brothers. They were kind of weird. Um, the way they took care of Fox and the way they, like, they treated her not almost like a sister, but like a commodity. You know, like, okay, yeah, you should do your hair like this. Yeah, open it up a little bit, yeah, so they could see this a little bit. Yeah, just give them a little bit of cleavage and so they could see that. I mean, like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> That's your sister, man. <laughs> so, you know, Fox come in there with them. And she's at an industry party. And I want to say it's the Mirage, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. But it's a lot of industry people there, right? And Queen Latifah, she catched Queen Latifah, like, checking her out. Like, staring at her and everything. And and then she tells her brother, like, that girl over there, you know, Latifah, man, she keep checking out my tits. <laughs> you know, like, she... <laughs> And like this ain't the first time. Like she did it like continuously, like letting her know, like what's up, like uh, like mm, I'm feeling you, you know. Like she was hitting on her, and that's how she felt, and she was insulted. See, there was a time, people, where it was not cool in that era. This wasn't an accepted thing in the in the black community back then. It was really not. It wasn't like it is now. Where they throw you a party and you get a promotion at your job and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no. Carpet munching and all that stuff. That was like taboo. That would have ended a career. Not enhanced it. So, the thing is, it was okay she told this to her brother. The problem is, she went and did interviews and spoke on it. It was like, whoa. Now, everybody kind of knew about Latifah and, and how she was and where she stood, but nobody really was going to say anything. You know, <laughs> you know nobody's going to bring that up. It's, you know, it's just Latifah. So... They're getting ready. They're filming the movie, Set It Off. And in the Set It Off thing, she's taking shots, talking about chicks gossiping and all the stuff that they're doing. And it's real subliminal. But people are like, man, I think she's talking about Foxy Brown. You know, and that's how everybody was taking it. Like, whoa, wait a minute. I think she's talking about Foxy Brown. So... As that kept going on, the disc records and all this nonsense uh, with the calling out names, pretty soon uh, Queen Pen got involved because she mentioned Queen Pen's name in the interview too. So Queen Pen ended up getting on a song with Queen Latifah and wanted to square down with them too. Her and Fox had it out outside of a hotel, some pushing and shoving stuff. Well, she was accusing both of them, and she's like, look, I'm strictly dickly, you know, this is what I do. I don't do that. What they're talking about doing, I don't do that. Right there. So, she was defiant and felt insulted that another woman was hitting on her. She was not with it. So she wanted to let everybody know. That's why she went on the radio and was saying it. Like, look, don't hit on me. I'm, I'm not the one. So that's all she really wanted to do. Was set herself apart. You know, I'm not doing that. Latifah took it as disrespect. So... 
Second time around, she came and made sure Fox knew exactly who she was talking about. She did a calling out names uh, part two or the remix or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, it was venomous. Well, she was talking about freak shows, make them leak hoes. I ain't talking about shooting free throws, coming on stage with no clothes. Who the unk said I can't beat those breaks? <laughs> Took so long for your album to drop, I thought you died and missed the wake. <laughs> now, You don't understand what these lyrics was really about. It was about the delay in the China Dog 2 album as it got a little venomous. Foxy Brown came out with her songs and from there it was just like, uh-oh, here we go. She came out with that 10% diss, dissing her queen pen. Then she came with that talk to me, you know, and Jay-Z was writing these diss records, you know, and that was the problem is that Jay was writing these diss songs and Tretch can tell Jay was writing these records. So Tretch was writing you're like, okay, we're going to do this remix. So, Tretch is behind the pen with Queen Latifah. Jay is behind the pen with Fox. Now, you got a new situation going now. You got a competition between Jay and Tretch in this battle. And this stretches out to a competition side, like, oh, okay, he gonna write for, oh, yeah, we already know he writing for homegirl, okay, he gonna even name drop himself in the diss, he gonna write his own name in there to make sure he get publicity on it, okay, cool, we finna give it to, we gonna give it to homie too, we gonna give, <laughs> we gonna give it to him too, so, Tretch is like writing venomously, like, it's flawless, if you listen to, if you listen to Latifah calling out names part two, I don't think Fox got them beat on none of it compared to that. That talk to me, mm -mm, it don't beat that. Calling out names part two was venomous. But she went there and was calling out your TV show is losing ratings. I thought you were supposed to be CEOs. <laughs> thought you hoes were supposed to be CEOs and all that stuff. Because Latifah had went in the movies. And, of course, the the song she was dissing her out, the calling names is on the Set It Off soundtrack. So it was getting some spins and making some noise. Now, it was going to cause some rifts because at this time, like I told you, hip hop is not like everybody can have their own personal venue and do their thing here, do their thing there. It wasn't that many locations for hip hop at the time. So if it's a big event, people are going to really see each other. Now, there wasn't no beef with, uh, you know, them, you know, New Jersey, them orange New Jersey dudes, but they just wanted to not be disrespected. Like, don't disrespect what we we laid the foundation and we had hip-hop on the map before Biggie got in there. Don't disrespect. <laughs> you know, like, y'all don't forget. In the 90s, New York rap was done in the early 90s and we held it down since 91. So, show some respect. You don't come for nobody on our team. You know, like, that's just foul. So, conversations was had, you know, Jay and Tretch situation. I'll go into that probably on the Patreon. I'll do that exclusively on the Patreon for y'all. 
so y'all can know what happened in the extension of that. I've edited that out of this video for that reason. But elders got involved. Um, people in the record company got involved and said, this isn't a good look to have two black women, you know, beefing like this. You know, it's just, it's not attractive. Especially Def Jam didn't feel this is attractive for Foxy Brown because they're not promoting this type of Foxy Brown. This is counterproductive. You know, so this is getting away from being the sexy, the sexy bombshell rapper that they want her to be to sell records. This is going down the wrong route. So, they ended up having a meeting, squashing the beef, and they got the understanding cleared up, and everything was everything. That Queen Latifah even got a talk show, the Queen Latifah show, and they had Foxy Brown come out there and perform as one of the guests, and they've been cool ever since. Like, they've never had another problem. Um, whatever conversation, whatever was said in the conversation, they was able to clear the air and take care of it like women supposed to. Even Queen Pen and um, and uh, Foxy, you know, they went on stage, and this was many years later though. And her and Queen Pen actually, you know, they came to terms with their whole thing. They hugged on stage, and that's what. You know, in this business, some a lot of people take themselves very seriously. You got to realize that this is an art form. This is a business. This is a lot of people in here trying to eat and make a living for themselves. And nobody really hates somebody else. But in today's world, in today's time, people really super sensitive because of the Internet and everything else. They got people laughing at me. Oh, I got to shoot them. It's like, I got, I got to. He embarrassed me. It's like, well, embarrass him back. But you got to take his life, and then you go to jail? Man, I, it's my pride, man. I, you know, if I got to go down for mine, that's how I'm going to go. And it's like the dumbest things, you, you know, in this era. And this is supposed to represent music, hip-hop, an art form. You look at the art form now. About four of the five top streaming artists right now in hip-hop are deceased. Let that sink in, people. Who's really getting that money? Juice World, Pop Smoke. You see what I'm saying? These, these guys aren't here anymore. And people are cashing in on them they still got King Von up there extension is still up there all of these artists who are losing their lives their music are trending and young Dolph songs is still trending Now, let that sink in. We got to start getting it together, people. Because at the end of the day, these are your kids, your children, your nephews, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters. And they're turning it into a war zone. They're taking the streets to the industry. And it's making and it's draining money out of the business. Because what sponsor would want to be associated with what's going on over there? Why would I want to put a billboard advertising a product where someone can come in and get poked in the neck at an event? 
where my my product, the big banners, is on top of that. And that photo is on top of the newspapers. And we're associated with that. That just hurts your brand. It hurts everything involved. So what you really need to be trying to understand is how this process is really working. What's the real target? And what's the real, like, what do you want to get out of this? Are you here to create music? Or are you here to gangbang on the mic? What are you doing? So Foxy and Queen Latifah, neither one of them were in that field, thank God. But it could have gotten bad because of the people that were surrounded by both sides. That could have got bad. But they were grown men and grown people around who knew better. So cooler heads prevailed. You'd already seen two rappers go at that time. And that was like, around that time, that was like right before Pac died, I believe. I think that was right before Pac passed. And once Pac passed, then Big passed, this whole whatever it is was going to be over with Foxy and Queen Latifah. They didn't want any more of this beef stuff. That was, it, it had to come to an end. So, thank God people, cooler heads prevail, but it's sad. People got to lose lives for them to learn lessons. So, I want everybody to hit the like button, subscribe to the page. Um, hopefully, you guys got the notification, you know. They've been a little flaky with that lately. So hopefully you guys got it. And I'm going to get out of here. Get out your hair. Take it easy.